consent. There is none. Approval of minutes. Molly, you said you had a correction? I do. I have a couple of yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. What is under chair report? Um, I was, well, I wasn't sure if this is a correction. It said meet at basketball at 10 to 3 30, 19 meeting, but are we having a meeting? Oh, no. Uh, that, that should be that should be 320. I just caught that correction too. Oh, so this is was this today. is not Nina Bassett. This is Lee Julio. I think it's I asked him how oh. to say his name. Julia. Julia. Okay. okay. Lee Julia. And not 330. And and um and he. Okay, so that should be 320, correct? And the other thing I saw was under at the top of page two. Under the bullet, while doing research at the water department, there's a weird sentence. There's some word missing. Mm -hmm. Documents, maybe we found something. Documents included. Is included. Uh, yeah, documents. Yeah. So the word documents should go out. Thank you. Small thing under the plan to get a lot. Page. Uh, so it's page three at the top. Okay. Um, he is still considering whether they should be underwire or shade trees. I, I don't know if that's the right, everyone thinks that's the right term, shade tree, as opposed to oh. underwire tree or or full size trees. Okay. Maybe I don't know. Depends on how people interpret that. A lot of shade or no shade. Mm hmm. It's really just what you said, Rob. So have you, if you can recall what you said. No, but I, I, I wouldn't say underwire or shade tree. It's confusing to me. Uh, what would you What would you like the minutes to reflect? You said underwire or large tree. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept the minutes as amended? Motion. Second. Uh, we'll say for the record, um, Todd gave the motion and Molly made the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great, thank you. 
Well, like, um, yeah. excuse me, those, the minutes that you have, can I get those at the end so I can give them a bath and she can, did you make the corrections on there? I did, yes. Um, you know what? Uh, there's another floating. I'm gonna, I'll use it because I usually don't keep my own. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So we'll, I, but I will do that Thank for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Uh, chair report. I have a lot of cool kind of things to report this week because I feel like it was a great educational week for me. So first of all, on Monday, um, we had our gathering at the home of Marty Nathan on Massasoit Street and the called Two Degrees. Um, with the invited guest, Bob Ackley, the gas leaks expert, was well attended, with the exception of our two, two, two tree wardens, <laughs> who the night before were up all night snow plowing. Oh. So they both had to bow out. Um, so our one tr real tree person representative there was a good one, and that was Christina Oh, awesome. Um, so I was really pleased that she was there and she heard Bob's talk. And it was just incredibly, um, uh, informative and he gave a slideshow presentation and showed you know classic tree death from um or, or the way trees decline and what it looks like when they decline when they've been exposed to methane poisoning uh, so uh, as i mentioned to a couple of other people uh i arrived 10 minutes early and he said hop in my car i have all my equipment set up to do a detection and do it straight from his car so we just did a little tiny loop around a block of, of Northampton. We're talking about like one tenth of one tenth of one percent of the city of Northampton. And in that block, we picked up a leak where else but in front of the YMCA. We we're planning on doing our Arbor Day um, planting. So <laughs> he also said, Sue, that he went back to Stoddard Street and detected gas leak still. So um, all of this to me r reminded me, or, or it confirmed how important it is, I think, that we be on top of, of monitoring, is, or we're throwing good money away, you know, in front of that. Um, and uh, so he, you know, was forthcoming to offer support if we ended up getting the equipment, training us how to use it. Uh, we talked a lot about what could be do at the state level. Christina was very interested in finding a way to incorporate this into her uh, teaching with her students. She was interested in talking to Rick Harper about um, about him, you know, incorporating it into his Urban Forestry Today monthly webinar. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I also, oh, also this week, so that, that was gas leaks, and I also had a, uh, a tea with Molly Freilisher, which was, very informative. I probably can't go into all the ins and outs of what we talked about, but um, Todd, you, you know, you would probably not be surprised to hear that she reported that um, they are trying to just get numbers of the extent to which forests have been converted to uh, non-forests for the purpose of solar rays. And she says, as far as I can tell, there's no one at the state level tracking this data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's interesting and discouraging, but um, trying to confirm that from a couple of different sources because sometimes they're not going. You know, she, she, her colleague tried to reach out to the DPU, but then um, another citizen in Northampton reached out to the Department of Energy Resources, and they said, "Oh yes, we're tracking this very closely, and we're doing follow up with the SMART program, and there's all sorts of disincentives for converting." It, it just there's, so there's inconsistencies. So that was the second thing I did. Then the third thing was I joined um, Rich and Rob and my daughter Madeline at the um, the annual Urban Forestry Conference at UMass. And I I found uh, the morning presentations quite good. And the one that I was most compelled by was a, um, a in basically a conservation biologist Molly uh, Molly Molly. And I thought um, I thought very much of you because. She did a study tracking uh, birds, chickadees, in a, a residential neighborhood in uh, suburban Washington, D.C. And basically the conclusion from tracking them over a period of time was that they, um, the presence of non-native trees had a huge impact on the insect population that the chickadees could feed on and consequently the sustainability of the chickadee population. Hmm. And um, what uh, this was, you know, it was peer reviewed, really hard data. It was exciting getting really recent hard data about this. And what she said is that 
municipalities should strive for absolutely no more than 30 percent of trees being non-native that, that that is consistent with pop, bird pop, this particular bird population not being sustained so how much you can you know extrapolate that to other bird populations so, I, it's hard to say, but one of the, you know one of the things she drove home, which was like such a eureka moment for me, was that there are you know like over two thousand different caterpillar species in um, Massachusetts, and that um, native species tend to um, support them, support up to like four hundred different kinds of them um, by being you know a source of food for the caterpillars. Um, whereas the non-native trees, it's like anywhere between one and six. No, zero to six. Mm -hmm. So in other words, um, native caterpillars don't eat non-native trees. And if you don't have caterpillars, you don't have a source of bird. Why would you find non-native trees? <laughs> uh, well, they're a source of bird. I know. One thing, thing that um, really was interesting to me is the way she defined native and non-native. Um, she basically said Eastern United States yeah. was native, which, yeah. which makes life more possible. Yeah, gives us more. So like sweet gums. Um, so yeah. You don't mm -hmm. see the forest here. But. Well, especially, and so that, I felt like that was an interesting both complement and contrast to the earlier presentation, which was all about storm resiliency, planting for storm resiliency. And like for them, like number one tree, ginkgo. And for her, like number 10, number 100th tree, ginkgo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it's like, all right, we've got to find a balance there. But, you know, if we don't have a, a healthy <coughs> ecosystem, like what are we doing to um, But uh, to that point, she was talking about how, um, you know, it's not enough to be in the same genus. Like she talked about cherry trees that were native, that supported a whole slew of, of um, you know, caterpillar varieties, whereas if they were European or Asian variety, Zippo. Mm -hmm. So, I love it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It was, a, I, I went to them before, and I thought these ones, these presentations were, they were good. Really good. So Molly, you know what I thought is that maybe it would be interesting to you to um, to look on an aggregate scale at my tree keeper and sort all of the, the trees that we have by native and non-native and get a percent of where we are. Mm -hmm. So just, using eastern seaboard, I mean east east eastern United States as the right native. as the definition yeah. of native. And I don't think it's going to be necessarily an easy thing to sort. Well, but it won't be that bad once you figure out for each species whether it's native or not. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's easy. You just go like the list of all those trees that we planted over the last. Yeah. Well, not but I'm tree, talking about uh, not just the trees we planted. Existing trees. Yeah. So you have to go through oh, their right, entire right. list of possible trees and somehow flag which ones are native, mm -hmm. and then sort for those. Mm -hmm. so well, maybe start that's with the ones so we planted because that's easy. Right, we can start them once we control them. Yeah, just control put them in that. or no or not. Right, and those are new ones that won't be on tree keeper. Yeah, but I mean, it's certainly a place to start. But for example, Norway maple is, not, you know, is well, as you know, yeah. and it's a very over planted tree. So it'd be interesting to know if we're already way behind or way in front of the curve. Yeah. So I thought that maybe you and Marilyn would find That's an interesting a, project. Yeah. Rob, did you want to say anything about? No, just it would be valuable to know about which plant, what we have planted recently because. You know, the Nora maples are phasing out, mm -hmm. and then we're phasing in new trees. Yeah. Does tree keeper have, a, have data in any kind of form tabular instead of having to go through the map and go one by one by one down the street? Nice. Not the, not the, well, the yeah, well, definitely. Is there a list of like how many Nora maples we have and how oh, many? I have oh, a, 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 a Excel spreadsheet with the whole thing on it. Oh, with all the data from tree keeper? Oh, perfect. You, oh. Can, you can download it. You can turn it all in an Excel document. Oh, oh well, that would be pretty. You mean our, our, our version? The public version you can? No. Oh, so you did that for Rob. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So maybe you could. So can I use that data yeah. to. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's a just, year old or something, but that. Close enough. It'll be enough for. Well, why don't you just get rich to work yeah. again? I mean, I'm not sure how easy it is to get. But. Well, Rob, can you just send me this? Yeah, I'll just send you what I have. Yes. Yeah, and it says like this many Norway maples, this many Norway spruce, this many. Well, it maples, just says this many. Norway maple, and then you can um, you can sort by species, right? 
Sure. Okay. Yeah, you'll probably, I'm sure you, you do yeah. spreadsheets all the time. You'll probably figure yeah. that out. You could add a column, sort of by species, add a yeah. column, right. pull and down, grab the handle and pull down N for native, or, right. you know, or oh, wow. code them. Right. Make another. I mean, you want to go through each tree and decide whether. No, just by species. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I can, that doesn't come to that. So yeah. it's in the spreadsheet. Great. Uh, so that yeah, so that's the learning I did this weekend. Did you? Did either of you want to mention anything about the? Uh, about the that, that you? Yeah, whatever about the conference. The conference. Uh, I have to think of it to, to say that it's very valuable to go to those because you hear the latest, newest uh, thoughts. But I did feel that almost everything that you. Uh, it came up. Rich is, you know, and I've spoken about in some way. In other words, there were very few things like, oh, we hadn't thought of that. I mean, we're, oh, that's good. Uh, you know, very aware that um, some of the species we plant are not valuable to insects. And been thinking about that. And, uh, they're not, but we, well, we weren't alone, though, because City of Springfield, that first presentation Alex Sherman gave, basically mirrored exactly the same type of trees that they're planting. Yeah. And yeah. he actually, it's interesting, I think Rob and I are going to try to go down there and actually need to look at their nursery that they have there mm -hmm. to kind of see how it's set up because their tree program is pretty extensive. And it's a really old tree program that's been around for a long time. So, um, so it was very valuable for me because um, hearing Alex, Alex Sherman mm -hmm. uh, speak, uh, He's taking into a lot of things we've taken into consideration in terms of how we're trying to plant, what we're trying to plant. So uh, the, the fact that we can then go visit, he's, he's been doing it for long, much longer. I think he, he's been there a decade. Too. He's been there, and then before that, it was Ed Casey who had been there for like 35 years. I mean, I, I took my takeaway from that whole conference was that what we're doing, we're doing it right. For the most part, you know, I mean, there's obviously we're going to, we will always tweak what we're doing, but I think. Planting the proper species, the right locations, you know, spending the amount of extra time to do what we're doing. I don't know, it's we young tree training. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely As, a huge takeaway yeah. from Alex, yeah. uh, which is, you know, if you want to avoid, if you want to make your your um, tree can be more resilient from major mm -hmm. storm events, young tree training or early. early. Uh, that um, was, yeah, that was great. And then the, the other thing, I mean, again, it just reinforced what you know, I'd say over and over is table over and over is setback trees, setback trees, setback trees, and Alex reinforced that. Yeah. And other people did too. I mean, it's just, uh, so it, it's not that we, it, hearing it reinforced is good because it's kind of, it's so easy to say, well, setbacks are hard to do relative. But, you know, you just hear it reinforced by other people on the lines, you, know, you have to stick to it. Stick to it. Um, I felt like the, the, the native present native tree presentation was eye opening because I don't think we've applied um, numbers to what our our population is in terms of native versus non native. So that's just that that's a way to guide us in the future that I think is super helpful. Yeah, it's another it's a, another like another set of criteria actually. Mm -hmm. Thirty percent of your of your so that's what you recommended? Absolutely no more than thirty percent. I would say We're that you in. saw yeah, you saw a lot more chance for the population to survive closer to, you know, under 20. Yeah. It gets very complicated because she includes in her study all the, all woody plants. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, including shrubs and ground 30 covers? 30% of all woody plants? Yes. How, wait, by number or by volume or what? That's the problem. We're not oh, on that's, science. You know what? I can get the devil's in the detail. I can get the, I can get the, um, the article. Well, I think to me, that's not that. so relevant because we only have control over what we have control that's over. That's correct. Yeah. So if we know that we're, and woody plants, what are the predominant woody plants in, a, in an urban setting that, like, that are providing the most mass? It's going to be trees. Right. But the, the thing is, like, mm -hmm. what she was working in a, a suburban uh, Washington area that was highly groomed. Like every place, mm -hmm. was, and, and she did that partly on purpose so she could identify all the plants. Mm -hmm. So there was instead of being like dress jungles and stuff. Mm -hmm. We actually live 
in more of a jungle because they're all the yards here. Yeah, there are other trees besides the street trees. They're just, they're just full of trees. Yeah, it's yeah, often trees. random trees. Yeah. That, and often not right. specimen trees. Whereas in Washington, right. D.C., mm. these trees were all specimen trees. Right. Every single tree was like, um, I mean, she showed pictures of these manicured things like tree here. Yeah. So they eliminated this great reservoir um, mm. that we have in our yards of right. basically maple trees, I guess. But you know, it, it, just to add to that, though, is I found it fascinating that she said that even though there were nearby parks, the chickadees favored the more residential settings for yes. their habitat. Yes. So I don't think that we should just think that, okay, because like I, I abut the meadows, the meadows have taken care of the wildlife. No, no. Um, but, 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 but the neighborhoods that we live in, like mine is kind of typical or Sue's, um, are full of Non non specimen trees. Oh, just yeah. regular trees. Yeah. Regular trees. And so the, the street trees. Volunteers. Are, there are a fairly small percentage of the overall North Indian tree cover. So you just have to be careful, like when you how you apply the science, because it's not right. that straightforward. I would say, like any kind of time when you're collecting data, you think about how is it going to be used, right. and well, you know, and you have to control for a lot of things. You have to narrow it, right? right. So it's it's hard to. Yeah. There's there's one of the urban forestry webinars um, by Linda Chucker Scott. Do you know? Her? And she looks she compiles a, a number of different studies looking at urban environments and native versus non-native, and you would enjoy that. That's one of those webinars, and then also the tree speak or the tree not tree speak the the forestry newsletter that just came out. Mm -hmm. Susan Foster. So that yeah. also has yeah. a Linda Chopper Scott article in it. And oh. she touches up there, but she doesn't go into all. But she has a lot of. What is it? Like they references. referred to. She was the, 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 March, the March version. Yeah. They referred to. Is that the Linda one? I don't like the Because they, right up, after yeah. this person lectured, um, she's really been looking into that, different studies and how yes. they've been done and impacts of native and. So at the so at the meeting, I don't really have a full understanding of it. The the guy was chairing it, was an academic at UMass, uh, and Molly Fryer was there, by the way, at, um, at the meeting. The guy was chairing it. Just up and said that they, he totally disagreed with the article that was in the Citizen Forester and, and supported the scientist who presented. It. So, but the scientist that presented did have that webinar. Where it is a scientist, and I think she's pretty sure she's a scientist, and she had taken samples of uh, insect life in non-native, yeah, yeah, in non-native, non-native places, and found that things found that things were going pretty well. So, the front page. What? She's on, sorry, she's on the front page. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so I, I do think that there is a problem with non-natives in terms of supporting. Yeah. But I, I think that the number, my guess is, I'm just saying, it's my guess that the number of non natives that we're putting out is having a minimal effect on the overall Northampton uh, wood plant. So um, we still don't know what our canopy percentage is right. that was as a good community. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. We don't. Yeah. And what part of it so, we've been involved in. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, you know what? I'm afraid I've taken my, more than my time of the chair report. I'll give you my time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do tonight. you have anything to report? Uh, the only thing I have to report is that uh, we, uh, lot, we had a tremendous amount of wind damage, which I think yeah. you're probably all aware of. And, yeah. uh, we had like 48 different tree oh, failures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Public shade tree? Public and private. Combination, mainly, uh, mainly pines. And the private don't come to your attention until they cross the public That's way. That's correct. The private trees are when they go across the public way, then we have to remove whatever's in the public right of way, and then we have to go back and we clean up whatever we pick up that was in the street, and we throw on people's lawns because it's just a cut and push operation at night. You're not really fine. You know, you're not doing a fine job at all. It was very. It was very windy and it was very actually scary. Yeah. I don't, I don't scare very easily, but uh, oh, it, yeah. Was, yeah. it was crazy. being out there in the middle of nowhere, and you know, so basically from the center of Florence going west was where the majority of the damage was. There was very little damage downtown. 
This might be slightly off the point, but is it possible just to park like a flashing light and go home and go to bed? No. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way anymore. Okay. Not at all. Dispatches, they're, they're calling us uh, left and right, and we worked until 1 o'clock in the morning, wow. and then we came back for 7, and they're still, <laughs> still doing storm. And then you had snow, snow duty yeah. several yeah. And snow duty, yeah. Wow. So it's been a busy, it's, and we're probably going to take us another week and a half to two weeks to finish cleaning everything up. Well, white pine was definitely the um, the tree that Alex Sherman gave the frowny face. Yes, he did. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 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 That, was, that was a storm. Not the storm. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was the worst. Yeah. And actually, what we we're going to be getting, I think the I'm going to be getting an email that will actually have all those presentations, so I can oh, get them all forwarded yeah. to everyone, oh, so you can all you can take a look yeah, at. Yeah, I took a ton of notes. Right. So, what is it? White pine um, multiple leaders? Like, is that the problem, or what's the? It's it's, it's a combination. So to be honest with you, a lot of them were actually uh, blow overs, blow downs. Sand. Oh, you got you got yeah, you got. They actually got rooted because yeah. the ground is so yep. the ground is so saturated, yep. uh -huh. and it's not truly frozen because yep. we. We had snow cover oh, for, so it was so first. Scary, so 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 it if we had that level of wind, when the leaves were, oh, yeah. this oh, industries were full of leaves, man. pines may not have stood out. Yes, That's sure. right? Yeah. We don't know that. No, I mean, I, I think that, you know, you have to take into consideration the, the, uh, the last time the wind blew that hard on, on Mount Washington was in 1973. Mm -hmm. So we actually beat 1973's record. So we had, right now this, that wind we had is basically record holding since wow. they've been keeping records at Mount Washington. Wow. Now Mount Washington is a little different, obviously, but I mean it, they, we had gusts going through here at 65, 70. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. crazy. And that's that's hurricane, you know, 75 mile an hour is hurricane mm -hmm. category one speed. Mm -hmm. So that's you know yeah. it, it just it's not it was not fun. Mm -hmm. you know. But. It is what it is. I'm glad it didn't happen when there was leaves on the trees, but I'm sure we'll, we'll find other damage with, with snow yeah. rise. One, one other thing against the Norway Naples, though, is that in his storm assessment, he didn't think the Norway Naples were very good. No, because they no. keep their leaves longer. Witness the Halloween. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, they're also brittle. Yeah. yeah. They're brittle. Yeah. 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 As they age? Yeah. yeah. He's witnessed a lot of them. Yeah. 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 There was some of, there was some of his assessments about what trees did well and what trees didn't didn't apply a filter for age for size like he just like we had you know this topped the list for number of trees that we had to take down which weren't tornado and and to me it just wasn't a scientific enough. Well, he didn't he didn't have how many trees were there represented there was no in the ratio whole population. of existing yes. population. So, okay. you didn't but also know. their age. So, so yeah, he's aged too, but he might have had a hundred of, of one tree and ten of them fell. It's a ten percent failure. Yeah. He might have had a thousand of another. Right. And, you know, so you, you didn't know. Yeah. Well, also that tornado went through a certain path. Mm -hmm. yeah. So whatever was in those neighborhoods, that could have right. been. Well, that he, that he had figured out. He did. Okay. Yeah, that he did yeah. figure out. But the, he, that wasn't a general. And, and, then, and, and there was a fair emphasis on Sandy. He also presented Hurricane Sandy when the trailers mm -hmm. were there. Mm -hmm. And there, there was saltwater intrusion, which is not something we're. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, if we have that problem, I think we're all yeah. going yeah. 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 to hang it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, it had some surprising results, though. Anything else? Yeah. No. That's it. That's it for you. Yeah. Okay. Really? Okay. Todd, do you want to talk about ordinance stuff? I know you sent me something wow. short before the meeting, but we get a chance to Yeah, so we haven't heard from the. Uh, Planning department based on our still working on it. Okay. Based on the yeah. our previous vote, right? I've not heard anything from them. No. Well, having to do with the solar array? Right. In other words, they haven't reached out to us? Right, that was my yeah. question. Yeah, they'd take it that week off and then she'd probably yeah. come back to a whole bunch of work. So I think we're only one week beyond that. So I'm not surprised. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we're still working on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, so I uh, was trying to put together our public shade tree protection component, which would be inserted into the existing uh, trench and driveway permit process. Um, and I sent. Uh, so this which, is not related to solar light, right? This is correct. Okay. 
And I sent to Rich and Lily a draft of those inserts, which really just are taken largely out of the ordinance that I wrote previously, uh, which we called the protect the, the tree yeah, tree disturbance permit. Um, and uh, what I would like for the next steps is for the city attorney to review uh, the direction that um, I was going before we go too much further uh, and just get some feedback on you know what are the landmines that we can't touch is this the direction that we thought we were going to go um, where is too far um, but I did uh, Lily um, take your suggestion uh, which was for I believe the significant tree ordinance um, but I inserted it into um, this public shade tree which was the payment in lieu of planting numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so the 100 for inches one, one to three. Do you want to describe that to everybody else? Yeah, so I mean, we've been uh, really since our inception kind of battling with the fact that our tree replacement metrics don't really account for the biomass of, of, this, of the tree, where we say, you know, if it's a 10 inch tree, you gotta have, you know, 10, 10 inches of DBH, and obviously that's not the same. Um, and also struggling with, you know, these big trees are, have a tremendous impact on a community and you take one down and it really has a big, bigger impact. So to kind of, in this case, to scale up uh, the payment in lieu of uh, replanting. And we can look at the replanting calculation too. So instead of one, one inch per one inch, we can look at that. I didn't have time to deal with that, but I did, in, for the payment in lieu of, I said that uh, you pay $100 for the first three inches. For inches four through six, you pay $150. This is per inch. Per inch. Yeah. And then for inches seven through nine, you pay $250. Mm -hmm. And 10 through, tw uh, or whatever. And then anything over 12 inches, you pay yeah. 300 bucks. Yeah. It's, also, it's a yeah. multiplicative yeah. amount of yes, absolutely. Items. That makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I asked Molly Freilich about that, and I said, why do most communities just do per inch? Yeah. I mean, it's like there's a huge difference right. between a 10 inch and a one inch tree, and she just said, Simplicity. Yeah. So it's really not that it's because no one's really thought of doing anything different. That sounds like a good And you can do the same thing with the replacement. So if you cut down a 10 inch caliber tree instead of planting 10 one inch tree, we can play with that calculation in this as well. But before I go and spend more than two, three hours on this, I'm going right. to turn it over. Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, I, I came across just in scrolling through some what other communities are doing is that Cambridge defines significant tree as eight inches or larger. Eight. Yes, and we, as you know, do 20. And that is completely arbitrary. And it was basically, as you recall, plunked on our lap as a draft the first time we met. And we were given like three weeks to have to make any comments about it, and we were just too fresh. I mean, I, I you weren't here, you weren't here, but the rest of us were like just getting our land legs, mm -hmm. and I just didn't feel like I had the, um, uh, I didn't have the knowledge base at all to to to, to provide much input about that draft or at least the time. I mean, I think that you know we made some improvements, the ANSI standards and so mm -hmm. forth, but. I'm wondering if not five years out now, it doesn't behoove us to take a really close look at that significant tree ordinance and go, how, what do we really want this to do and how, how will this protect? Well, I, do, I think it makes sense largely because not just of the solar pressure, uh, but development and use of the wooded parcels pressure in general, which you will see ramped up in Western Mass both for, not necessarily for what we used to see, subdivision development, but for energy. Bio and you're gonna see yep. biomass uh, yeah. There was cutting. a big thing in the newspaper about, well, uh, I don't know, Baker um, being really for biomass. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's yeah. an uh, article in Vox uh, that actually references the mass law and goes into um, the hazards of biomass. Um, huh. And just in terms of the laws and the way that we're getting around the true carbon calculation when it comes to biomass. MIT has put out a paper on that uh, specific issue. Oh, really? Yep. And and wow. this and this one um, professor emeritus named Bill Muma who came and gave a presentation at Smith College upon the invitation. She's in the box art. 
He is. He's mentioned in it. He's done a lot of calculations, and he uh, uh, is deeply, deeply concerned um, that we are basically fudging the numbers. And a, we're fudging the numbers when it comes to you know global warming or uh, greenhouse gas calculations. Um, I see sequestration so much. So, uh, and uh, just one, one yeah. more, one more piece, um, and that um, you know we're we're really um, incentivizing Western Mass to become you know. What do you mean we? Uh, the state. Oh, the state. So the article from MIT, if you could circulate, because that yeah, might I'll actually give us like a scientific basis in relation to, to have a what does carbon neutral mean? Yeah, and then yeah. someone came up with that as saying. There is, yeah, I'd love to they see that article and also that one too. Yeah, I was just going to say, but I think it does make sense to take another look at the significant tree ordinance yeah. uh, with that in mind, since mm -hmm. it was originally put forward basically to protect against certain types of subdivision clearing. But I think that's less of a concern in Western Massachusetts, mm -hmm. uh, given our economy here, mm -hmm. than you know what what, what we are seeing happen. You know, this is again where Molly comes in, though, um, my conversation with her, and that is I'm not sure how, how protected will be because so that land like that might fall under Chapter 61, mm -hmm. in which case we have no jurisdiction. Wait, wait, wait. Chapter 61 Chapter be used for solar? Chapter 61 could be used for timber. Oh. That's what oh, Chapter timber. 61 is for. Biomass. Oh, you're talking about biomass. Not yes, solar. yes, I'm talking about biomass, but we're talking about like conversion to energy, um, not just solar, but also cutting down timber for for biofuel, and um, that really falls outside of our jurisdiction. Like there, mm -hmm. there's yeah, there's no site plan or special permit for cutting. No, they don't do anything because it falls under. So significant tree doesn't affect that. Not if, not not if your land is in Chapter 61. Uh -uh. Right. So, so there is no way we can modify our Chapter 61 covers. Right. And for for just cutting, yes. But you know there are other ways to. Um, you could you could build a biomass facility on a property. Uh, that's. A permittable right. process. But no, you can't That's regulate it. Right. That's the so, actually, right now, solar is hard to regulate and plants because they will have legislation that makes it hard to. What? Wow, they have big money. Yeah, well, the, the, the solar one is almost accidental. So because it was designed for rooftop events with the legislation. Tech rooftop for yeah, So it was yeah. actually kind of a good thing probably when it happened, the sound of it. You know. There's been a few articles to the exact thing about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 and there was one that, that mm -hmm. cited um, pseudoscience. Uh, so because I followed his link to the article. So there was one letter to the editor that talked about how um, Solar panels produce a hundred times as much energy at, as a stand of trees sequesters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, based on what? Like, mm -hmm. what are the parameters mm -hmm. of that study? And, and and when I followed the link, it was to a pro solar company uh, yeah. that was using cal the very rudimentary calculations. It was not, you know, done at a, by researchers at all. There were two subsequent letters. Yes, they were positive. That were, that After were that, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there's and been a lot of action on solar and trees in the by four letters. Back. Well, I, when I got when I saw that one letter, I sent I I called up for some support or counter All right. So, um, anything else about? So you you're gonna you two are gonna connect about making a fun move. Um, yeah, I'll make some comments. Excellent. There's Just, more to them, sir. We will go one ahead. other quick point about the biomass thing. I don't know if they pulled this in, but they were thinking about that as a heat source for our campus at one point. And um, 
a lot of times they didn't figure in like the amount of tractor trailer trucks mm -hmm. that moved that stuff around. Yeah. It would have been three tractor trailer trucks a day, a day into our campus, yeah. little wow. state campus to be able to feed that. It's like a mini factory. Well, yeah. well, in, in that, I mean, we all know trucks aren't the most, you know, as far as just making sure that's in the calculations. Sounds like So many things that's are going that's, that's what they said the yeah. other day. I don't know. That seems high to me, but. Well, for an entire campus, I mean, it was really going to feed the entire campus. Mm -hmm. That's what, that was wow. trying to It's not to like do. coal. It's not terribly energy dense material. All right, so um, I'm going to move us along. Chips. Chips. Arbor Day preparations. I have something I can um, show folks, and that is Madeline's been working on her brochure. I emailed the principals, but it said it was too late, so I'm pushing for like, what do we have to do to get this set up for next year? Mm -hmm. This has been lagging for years. I'm so. Madeline. Um, okay. I don't know if people want to huddle around and take a look at this uh, because I can't, I obviously can't put it up on a screen, but it's just, she's working on a brochure, Karen's helped her work on a map, and the map is going to be a little bit more, but I would actually love your feedback because I think making sure that she keeps it simple but gets the right information in. So this is, you know, this is a trifold. Mm -hmm. And that's two parts. One is a cover, some explanation, and the other is the map. It's almost the Trainer of Hampton logo. Oh, is it? Well, yeah. we just pulled it off of the. Uh, oh, so probably we did from Canva. Not <laughs> the same one. <laughs> Actually, this is a this is maybe a placeholder too because Maggie wants okay. to draw, draw a tree. Oh, so so, so wait, where are these brochures going to go? So they're going to go at uh, Senior Center, City Hall, Forbes Library. That, oh, yeah. Tell people and then about in front of City Hall. Or, yeah, tell people about Tree Speak. Mm -hmm. So this cool. is this is what it says. It says. Welcome to Tree Speak Northampton, a collaboration of the Smith College Botanic Garden and the City of Northampton. We selected five special trees for this tour. Learn about them and their contributions to our community. Then it cites the five trees and their locations. And it says, follow the map on reverse side to take a self-guided Tree Speak tour. Here it says how to listen. On each tree, you will find a Tree Speak label with a QR code that when scanned by a smartphone directs you to an audio recording about that truth. And then it gives you some bullet points. Download a free QR code reader from your device's app store. Open QR code reader on your device. Scan QR code with the reader to access the Tree Speak web page. Press play on the audio to listen. Mm -hmm. They need all those instructions. I don't know how to read a QR code. It's good you have them in there. Yeah. I, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't know what to do either. I, know. Yeah, that, I think it's good. Okay. Okay. It's all right. all over the world. Good. Good. Yeah. Listen. Who here's ever done for the tree right. for oh, the tree Some people, yes. Some people might not know what it is. I did once when it first came out, and I'm like, Oh, you know what? She was. This is a placeholder, probably, for where for she's going to have a sample it would look a like for a QR code. Actually, it'll be a sample of the label with the QR code, probably with like an arrow right. that says QR. That's good. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay. And, um, and then okay, and so this is the map. So I'm sorry I can't make this much bigger. I can try it on. Okay, there we go. Um, this is going to. There's. This is going to rise further. But basically, and this this is Pulaski Park. It's going to be labeled. So you have a zoom out of Pulaski Park, which will be labeled, and it's going to have arrows going from tree one to two to three. And then this gets a little tricky. Then you know you're going this way. Then you're going out behind, uh, like through the Roundhouse parking lot, mm -hmm. down to Cons, Cons and stuff. So you're going to the Elm, and then you've got a long walk here. <laughs> we thought about taking people the back way, but there's no way. Mm -hmm. um, so this yeah. is up South Street. Yeah. So it's a long trek to go to this last tree, but it's kind of people can just yeah. We might even, I think we're going to put here um, Champion Oak Tree so that it's clear that it's... They don't have to go to all that one time yet. Is that guy that lives in that house going to be okay with it? Yeah, it's, you don't have to stand on any property. He's a little cranky. Yeah. 
Street. The guy next to uh, oh. Rebecca Niemark's house? That has, I don't know if it's Rebecca Niemark's house, but yeah, it has. Yeah, her house is to the right. They share part of the driveway. Oh, that where the Champion Oak is? Yeah, that guy doesn't, uh, I guess. He's and a little cranky. Well, well, you know what? We put Rebecca's house. Yeah, that's on tape. Okay. <laughs> but also, you might want to put something about not turning around and you watch the driveway. cable TV. It, oh, you know, it had just been my assumption that people, this is a walking tour. It has to be a walking tour, at least out here, because yeah. you're going, you're exiting the rear of, or sure. of uh, Pulaski Park. So I'm wondering if we should say Tree Speak self-guided walking tour. Well, yeah, yeah. Slash biking tour or something. Yeah. Walk bike tour. Yeah. You can bike out well, you can. Uh, you can, you can, you can yeah, yeah, you can take your, it has a, it has a, a rim. Yeah, very, uh, all right, so any, because um, I can see people doing this part on foot, and then I'm like, oh, I'll drive up there later. Yeah. It's okay, put it in my car. I'm like, wow. Yeah, they can do that on the other side. Oh, really? Anytime. Any other feedback? Once they learn where the tree is, they might have a bit of instructive car stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, walking tour, that's a good point. That was one carriage stand. Any other feedback about information that should be on this? It looks like, yeah, I think it's good. Simple, this is very clear. Bullets, I like the bullets. Yeah. All right. What else we got at Arbor Day that we need to think about? Um, Marilyn's got all those letters that um, yep. she was going to print, and then we were going to do a big letter writing thing. I sent her the updated spreadsheet. I added a couple of landscape contractors that I saw or remember, and then I actually, every time I go around town, I see someone doing work, I try to take down their contact information so we can just add it because there's people coming and doing work from all over. I did order the um, the whips, so that's done. Um, when do you, when should I have a press release out? So if we could, 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 I think I think you should get if you could. We we should actually get the mayor to have his press release like released the Monday before Arbor Day last year. I think we were a little late. Oh, I don't think we were a little late. I think it just got released a little Oh, I remember it, it, it got, I think it was vacations so, or something. Yeah. Well, so Monday, just well, I should probably, before it later. So I should probably send it to his office like the Wednesday before. Because it takes him a couple of days to yeah. look at it. If not, if not even sooner, Lily, really, if you can. Well, here's, okay, so how do you. We don't have the sites, so you can't send it. Right, we have the sites, we don't. No, we oh, okay. So that's kind that's, of that's kind of the next uh, yeah. subcommittee report. But what, yeah, what, so just yes. We I'm just talking about the timeline for the press release because the other. I don't know that we're going to get into those kind of weeds for the press release. To be honest, well, to tell them where. I mean, I you mean by then won't we have our volunteers lined up for the planting of the trees? Oh yeah. I mean, and by then we're going to know exactly what stock we're getting, where we're going to be. Okay, so I'll be able to plug that in at the last minute. Probably. So, or just we're say we're doing two community tree plants. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think it. I don't think it's imperative that it has yeah. to have that. Yeah. Because that probably want to get a lot of those details out. But for the for the tree speak, I was thinking that if we want to have this thing ready to go by Arbor Day, do we want to have a photo op of you affixing them to the trees? Mm -hmm. uh, ahead of time, or do we want to just say that for Arbor Day and make it look, you know, stage it like you're putting them up? I mean, I think you're going to be busy on Arbor Day. <laughs> How about the whole week? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a busy week. So I'm trying to see, I'm just trying to count backwards. Like, right. at what point do we want to uh, put on, put the labels on the trees? Before Arbor Day. Personally, I think we should try to do as much as possible beforehand. Like, so the week before, maybe? Yep. Because all the staging and everything needs to be done because it's just a lot, especially if we're going to try to tackle planting two different locations. That's just a lot of logistics. That's from my perspective. You know? And we're holding down the whip giveaway. Yep. It's a lot. Okay, so Arbor Day's a Friday. Why don't we say Friday of the week before, which is the 19th, we do a little photo op of getting the tree speak labels up. Uh, 
And then by Monday, we're trying to get the um, press release out. See, I'm just trying to figure out if I should wrap up, wrap in this photo op with, with the press release to kind of generate some excitement about Arbor Day and this tour. Do you want to send photo with a photo with the press release? The packet? Yeah, but I know the Gazette, they don't, unless they bring out their own photographer, but rarely. Oh, you use somebody else. So it's yeah. just not high enough quality. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe we'll do the press release that and and the other thing. Okay, I, I'll I'll figure this out. Is there anything else? Any other balls that need to fall into place that we need to know about? You have a group of seven people. Yes. Yeah. Seven for the twenty-seven. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would say if the only other thing is if if we are uh, if it ends up we are doing the some planting at the Y, they have a leaders club that sh with, of young people that probably should I can get you the contact Absolutely. information yeah. for that. So we should at least have a priority that if they can do that plant if we are doing that planting and they are available to do the planting, we should have them as volunteers at that planting site, for sure. And I have an email that I can um, tell you the name of the person who's the um, head of the leaders club, the adult who's the head of the leaders club. Yeah, yeah, and they may be an ongoing, it might be potential that they would be willing to be, you know, do whatever, Repeat plantings. Not They're really excited to hear that. Yeah, not yeah. that week, but you know, it may yeah. be part of yeah. their schedule. They yeah. 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 That's well, a possible. On another day. Yeah, it's yeah. possibly, sure. Well, and, and, then, uh, and yeah, then in the fall, and then it yeah. might be a thing that they Sometimes do. Sometimes you spend all that time training somebody. It's right. really good. Right. 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 Ongoing right. commitment, maybe. All right, so I've, I, I'm just trying to, I'm generating some to dos that we need to do um, for Arbor Day. and. Uh, so outreach to the leaders club at the Y. Mm -hmm. um, e, Rob and Rich are obviously on tree acquisition and siting with the site committee. Um, uh, Rich, will you be contacting the gas company about a week near the Y? Yeah, I can contact Rick, uh, Rick Ross. Thank you. Or actually, Don, Don I mean, it could be a cranky neighbor if you, if you think that would be more effective. Mm -hmm. uh, any other to-dos regarding Arbor Day that we need to be thinking about? I'll ask Alicia if she wants to do materials again. She's, in the past, she's done buttons were a huge hit. People loved yeah. did these yeah. buttons with trees on them different kinds of trees and just art of trees and actual leaves some of them just have leaves inside and she's done educational pieces she did coloring with different types of leaves coloring sheets little cards and then she also did um i forget who did all of the printouts about the tree themselves oh right those were nice those was this at the at the planting zoo or at city hall city hall oh, okay yeah, materials for the table. Mm -hmm. People like to walk away with like a little button, they particularly like the buttons. Okay. Okay. Um, Alicia, you have anything else? All right, I think we're ready to move on, unless anyone else has anything related to Arbor Day. Okay. And you'll let us know as the time nears what time of the day you'll want us on Saturday. Is it roughly going to be like 8 to noon kind of thing? Or? For the, for the when you're aware of planting. from Rich, but I'll certainly let you know. Um, Usually nine or eight or. For, uh, the whip, I think early. The whip giveaway. No, not the no, giveaway. The I'm planting sorry. on. We there's it's a sheet of planting. seven of us. I mean, I think it really depends upon what we have available for nursery stock and what we're tackling. So okay. I mean, you know, the earlier 
for, for DPW staff, the earlier the better, actually, um, it's for you know logistics. But if the if the trees are already there and we need limited staff, we could go a little later. But again, the best. So when you say the earlier better, eight a.m. Eight, 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 eight is. Yeah. I think that's when we started at the yeah. set. And there's been some conversation in the last meeting that it's about it might be more of a photo op that day, depending on logistics for the suppliers. Okay. For the trees. That day being Saturday? Yeah, for the other day weekend. Okay. Friday and Saturday. At least that's what's in the minutes from last I it's just it's overall logi it's overall logistics altogether, it's just availability for you know, what we have. Right. We're trying to hammer through all that. All right, subcommittee reports. Ours? Yeah. Ours, uh, ours did not have any. We met problem. briefly uh, before the meeting. We reviewed uh, the site plan of uh, the Y as well as uh, the Callahan Cahill, Cahill Apartments. Um, and uh, I think we came to a general consensus, and I think we also have been able to reach out to the Y. Um, but it looks like uh, plan A is for uh, elms to be planted on the parking lot side, uh, kind of on the down, as close to the parking lot as possible with the hope that they will uh, grow uh, rapidly and strongly and then when they branch out, they'll be branching out over the wires as opposed to getting into them. Um, and perhaps some interspersed um, uh, understory planting uh, to serve as a visual barrier for the lights, which was the original intent of the site plan. Um, and those would be uh, elms, and there was also additional elms uh, proposed to be planted at the housing uh, project, again, interspersed with some understory, um, perhaps more flowering trees. But, um, those seem to be the consensus of the site plan. Elms, like um, American Elms? Princeton. Oh, those? Princeton Elms. Yeah. Oh, well, it was American, American. Yeah. And are they, what's the, what's the story with those being resistant? Well, they, they exist at Princeton. There's a row of them, and they didn't get Dutch Elm disease, so oh. people just thought maybe they were very good. And, oh. and they, they seem oh, to, to be. So, so they might have some kind of natural immunity? Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's cool. Oh, you mean, so they're not hybridized at all? No. <laughs> Right. Um, but Alex right. had mentioned Valley Forge. Have we had any experience with those? Cold there. Uh, oh, to, uh, uh, at, uh, at Village Hill, there's, there's Valley Forge. There's a row of them on the all on both sides of the street. Mm -hmm. Are those also American Elms? Did this mm -hmm. happen to be at Valley nope. Forge? And didn't? No, those those were hybridized. Oh, oh. They just, no, they weren't at the territory during George Washington. So the, the, mm -hmm. the reason that, that Princeton is being selected is that um, Jay Gerard is struggled with the issue of how to grow elm trees successfully. But that perhaps the Princeton elm had the best form that was controlled. They, they controlled the form is a nightmare because if they go out of form, they're, uh -huh. they're uh -huh. very unruly and hard to fix. And so on Elm Street, we've got, for instance, a couple more, like two, five or 10 year old ones. And they're just like, you know, they're beyond fixing. Well, one of them broke. Yeah, do you remember the ice storm of 2010? Yeah. A, a bunch of them were just lopped off. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. And so then they suckered back. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so so the form is tough. Uh, and now it's possible that the ones we're growing in an ice storm will also break off, but we're, what we're doing is we're limiting the number of side branches as they go off. So, Side branches are part of what you know. What you know. I would think with elms with that base shape, yeah, would be really susceptible to that. Just yeah, but they don't it. once they get up there. We know that. So the very the elm wood is very strong. Yes. Oh, is it's it? Very very hardy wood. Oh. Uh, the Valley Forge elms at Olander is a good point. Again, no tree train, no tree train, no tree train. Is that those trees up there are unruly now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have you know main leaders, but then they have co-dominant. They have other limbs Mold. that are yeah. multiples that are actually just as big as the dominant supposed mm. leader yeah. that's supposed oh. to be there. So now you have a limb this yeah. big you have to lop off, yeah. mm -hmm. and the trunk's this big, so the tree's not probably, right. So it's yeah, you know. You I, know, I, when I did my uh, tree steward training um, a couple of years ago back at Harvard Forest, they talked about um, just 
over a couple of years when you have that, just cutting a portion of that that competing yeah. limb it's off. It's called a reduction cut. Yeah. 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 The problem is is that some of these trees have co-dominant leaders, you know, five feet in the air, mm. five feet sort of basically at my, my eye level. Mm. So it's because they were just never trained properly. And this is really one of the reasons why we have so much storm damage. And right. this is the main reason why I have storm right. damage and deciduous trees and, and right. failures right. is because of, that's what right. Alex talked about. Mm -hmm. It um, must be that Back in the day, they just, they knew to do this because all of those mature elms that we inherited back in the day had these perfect single dots. Yeah, did they train those? They must have. Oh yeah. They must oh, have. Yeah. There's a, there's a photograph that we had, or is it, they showed it to me, of someone planting that, an American elm, and it is a root ball, pretty good size, with a stick 20 feet with a few little branches on the top. Yeah. When they were planting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, they, they must have they trained. They had ways of doing it. Yeah. So the Princeton L may not be the, the answer, but it's the best answer that I think Rich and uh, Jay and including yourself come up with. I mean, it doesn't mean we have to stick exclusively to them. We've planted. I, I like the idea of Princeton L. We've planted yeah. a dozen of them already. Yeah. Uh, I do think that the Lake Spark L is really nice and that it seems to thrive under hard circumstances. It does. But again, that's a non native. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. At this point, well, Elm got huge ratings for being a friendly habitat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's a great idea. Um, yeah, thrilled. They're more work. I mean, they're, they're more work. I, I was out. You got, you got a window of time you can go and prune. Yeah, Paige and I yeah, were out uh, last that. weekend. We chased down all the elms that we planted. Uh, the 12 we planted each of those has mm -hmm. now been pruned. Mm -hmm. and, and they're growing. Three to four feet a year. So that's unbelievable for a street. That's a, wow. so three to four things. feet a year. Yeah. I mean, wow. that's like insane amount. Wow. Just, wow. To, just to follow up at the end of the sorry to cut you off of the subcommittee report. Rob and I are meeting with the executive director and the assistant executive director of the housing authority to talk about the Cato plant. That's what they were very excited. So we had a postponed our appointment. It's tomorrow at ten. So we're going to go in and try to hash out the bring the agreement with me and show them exactly what we're interested in doing and how many trees we're possibly proposing to plant. And, and they were all for it via email, so we're just going to try to follow the first one. We'll do the same thing with the Y. Uh, once we have a, just a better handle on I'm waiting for Chestnut Ridge Nursery to get back to me from Buffalo because that's where the elms are going to come from. So that's kind of a big the spring, that's, like, that's like a big question mark right now about how many elms will actually have to plant at both of these locations. We'll, you know, we probably will be able to get them, but will we get them four hour a day based on their ability to dig them? Yeah. yeah. So, so the, um, so the why I emailed her back, she said yes, we want to do this. Uh, so where we're because of the. Um, that the city would be responsible for them. I think that really took the tables. And so I responded back to her and I said, at this point, um, the tree warden will be in touch with you at some point. So that's kind of where I left okay. it. So I don't need to, you know. No, nope. okay. I'll just pick up from that email right. afterwards. I'm just yeah. kind of waiting to hear back from Justin. Sure, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted everybody to know what, where and I'm, yeah, and I'm also. You passed the baton well. Yes. I'm also telling, we're also <laughs> going to be telling folks that, you know, we, we may not. We may not plant everything on Arbor Day, yeah. so we'll, we'll be right. back. But it'll, hopefully, we'll, we'll right. our goal is to get it done in this growing season. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But at least we'll. You know. I bet that's reason people will understand. Yeah. We can only get yeah. so many plants, and and you never know what the weather's going to be on Arbor Day. Right. Well, that's true. Yeah. 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 No <laughs> kidding. Right. Yeah. We'll see that. That's cold last year. All right. Cold um, cold. Yeah. Anything else for seven minute report? No, right? No, does it? Before we go to the meeting tomorrow, should we put full circles on that? Yes, right here. So you already I already have it. No, we'll do it before we leave. Okay, if you want, if you have a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Thank Trader you. with Hampton. It's really all about Rob and Rich and the different groups we've, um, we come, their, Rich made a decision to really focus on Village Hill. And so, I have been organizing Saturday, and Kevin, Jennifer Paul, who's been organizing, 
Paul Bayer. Paul Bayer. Um, he was organizing Wednesday. Wednesday, and this woman Mindy was organizing Tuesday using uh, Doodle Poll. So we just sort of combined all the lists into one for the duration of the printing season. Everybody's using the dual poll for all three days. And they start up consolidates so having three different people and three different groups of people organizing and picking days and things like that and communicating. So Mindy's taking on that. Fun's at Bill Chill in her neighborhood. She's going to to take that on. Maybe still. Yeah. <laughs> she's an MB in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's been doing a lot of organizing to get the work that's been done on the trees up there and all right. just full energy and going to go and tell us a big project. We were there today. So, I'm going. so tell now you really talk about what the work, the activity. Well, is again, it's, it's larger trees. Mm -hmm. So it's slow and it Rich and I, between us, we, we worked on three or four trees to the you whole. Know, I, I did two hours, I did two today. Two trees, by yeah. myself without anybody because mm -hmm. there wasn't enough volunteers per se to. And I was with a couple you know, with another volunteer, and we did two, and there were two other volunteers, and they did one or two. So, so this is more like intermediate age tree pruning? Yeah, these are, these are six to eight inch. Yes. And they're 20, 25 feet tall. Mm -hmm. And so you're getting up in a bucket? No. I have a 12-foot ladder. No, I have a 12-foot ladder, and then I just use a pole saw. It's a pole for yeah. So, pole locker. But, I mean, it, it's just slow and difficult work. It's heavy, and, and uh, that's what we're doing. Is there, um, I would like to work on it if I can squeeze it in. Is there room for somebody like me who doesn't yep. have a ton of training experience? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yep. so the, the, and put you on the list? Yes. You'll be on, there's yeah. a doodle ball. You, you go into the doodle ball. We, we do have to control so that we only have, like, well, now we have three ladders. We still only have two ladders. And so you can't do them without ladders. So that means that really, effectively, only two. You need step ladders? Yeah, these are three. Are a special ladders. kind of step yeah, ladders? Yeah, these are orchard ladders. Try five orchard uh, ladders. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a spotter at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So it's, a, it's slow, it's limited, yeah. and you have to have. So you can only have, with that people with less experience, you can only have one for each ladder. Yeah. With less experience. And right. you only have two ladders. Right. So yeah. So you can along, you know. Organize and, it. And I look forward to the day when everyone is able to work on trees that are, you know, 10 feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a lot of it's, almost every tree, it's reduction cutting. Lots of reduction. That cuts, which, from yeah. the times I've gone. Well, these these trees ne have never been pruned, so they they never had a young tree train when they were supposed to, right? Mm -hmm. Right. They had a young tree train probably in 2010, <clears throat> and here we are nine years later, and uh, so these trees are 15 years old, mm -hmm. almost 20. So, so, yeah. so, so a competing leader might be 15 feet long, mm -hmm. like this big around 15 yeah. feet long. Yeah. So yeah. it's like another tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of work, but I think it'd be nice to kind of finish Village Hill so we can say we're done, and then yeah. we can move to yeah. a different ward. Because before we were splitting ourselves up on the different days, and um, it's not really. I think the moving in large numbers gets things done a lot quicker, and just staying focused in one place mm -hmm. uh, and then moving along. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And it's good as well because it keeps the same people that we have for planting days. You know, moving so it's yeah, engaged and you know, a lot of people don't like being out in twenty two degree weather today, but some people were there and yeah, they, they did it. It was a little windy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's always learning. Like every there's so much to learn and I think that the people who do go out to the planting and are now doing the pruning, they that's part of the attraction is they're learning from Rich and from Rob mm -hmm. and when Bob Goss is there or great. The volunteers. Mm -hmm. Nice job. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Okay, uh, are we done with King Northampton? Yes. All right, any other business? I did think of one thing when I mentioned the gas leaks presentation. Uh, the neighbors in two, at two degrees, so these are the neighbors in the Massachusetts area, wanted to know if they could be invited to a future meeting to talk to us about next steps in how to you know sh share this knowledge 
protect our tree stock, whatever it is, they want they they felt like they want to be engaged. So do I have your permission to invite to invite them to a future event? Sure. Sure, why not? Okay. Have you reach out? Yeah. Any other business? Okay, to-do list. Well, Ralph's gonna send me the uh, spreadsheet and I'll start working on that. You already have all the things we've recently planned, so you can do some sort of combination yeah, or comparison or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I guess my, my other thing is I don't want to be like doing all this analysis and if it's not something we're actually going to use. I, just, I, I, you know. I will definitely use it in my. So you'd like to know of the trees that we planted recently, um, which ones? Are well, let's know what we have, but also what we're doing. Coming. Yeah, what we're doing also. I think it would be interesting because people come, that's one of the most frequent questions we get when we're planting trees is how come, you know, yeah. it's not necessarily all native trees? And to be able to say, well, these are East Coast trees, which just builds our relationship with yeah. people. Like, I think it's valuable. Yeah, and to be able to say, you know, we're trying very hard to keep the non native within a certain ratio of native. And, you know, based on the best science we can get about what supports a healthy bird population. So, <laughs> so I, I've been keeping track of this in a very informal, just kind of almost in my head. So, I actually, have, knowing what it is, especially for what we're doing. Planting, especially that um, what we already have, got some that I can. Um, yeah, I'll start that. You know, this whole thing of deciding what to plant has got so many different. Mm -hmm. I know. So many different. It's not like we're going to so, use what you say. Like, okay, now we know what to plant. I know. There's it, so many, other, so many different. Factors. Give us a, so many factors. Just like the tree inventory, kind of give us a yeah. place. Where do we stand? And, and, and are we generally yeah. moving in the yeah, right direction? I mean, mm -hmm. like if one aspect is goes right up and you south, we need to pull it back in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I missed the afternoon uh, presentation, which I thought was an effort to try to bring all three of the morning presentations together. It's like, okay, now we've learned what's good for resilience, what's good for um, you know climate mitigation, what's good for um, for biodiversity now was there like okay so what are really like what do we distill down to a top excellence it, it was a it was a beauty pageant <laughs> I couldn't describe it in any better way. That's too funny. Yeah. They were well, all sort of buying. Well, what happened was they, he just he just there were many people who had input and they and they they were discussing the the, the value of different trees yeah. and also trees that they thought were problems that the white pine might break off. And so they all sort of threw that. He just took all of their um, their what they liked. And then a tree got a vote, then they get one vote, and they got two votes. And so it was like, it's, it's a, it, a lot of it was like the tree du jour, too, because there are certain trees that come up that are like uh, newest, latest tree. Like, I got an idea. And so, like, I think the, the top tree was, I think, um, uh, was it Kentucky coffee tree, or no, or was it, um, it was, uh, it, it, it was a tree that you don't have my notes with me. It was a tree that they see how Frank has the park in front of me. Oh, uh. Turkish building? Uh, no, uh. Uh, that you'll have a paper park. Uh, no. No. Paper park? No, no, it's a tree you haven't thought of. Anyway. Oh. The, the, Black bulbs. What? <laughs> the one that the, the, the guy who came here and said they break apart and get a look out. Delcova. The yeah. God, please, Delcova. No, 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 no. That one was like tanked. I don't remember. Anyway, it's all in my notes. Anyway, yeah. the, the, point, the point is yeah. that, 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 that it, was, it was not a serious, it was not a very serious, uh, it's good because we have a list of trees that other people are considering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but um, you know, way up on the list was uh, Ginkgo, number two, was voted tree. Um, uh, yeah. It strikes me. I mean, we, we you know we have a very good start with our um, tree guide, which lists right the attributes of each mm -hmm. species. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, but what we haven't done is kind of clump them by attribute, and and then be able to mesh them up with site considerations or macro goals of the city, which I think all you know the the goals 
whether we're trying to overall achieve a 30% number of either a species or you know a native or what have you, but then you have your site conditions which you could absolutely need something that's salt tolerant or something to deal with the stormwater system, you know, a green infrastructure project. And what we don't really have other than our ad hoc knowledge is a way to say, well, here's, here's our overall goals overlaid with the site conditions, which gives us these 10 trees to choose. That's a sortable software. Yeah, software. yeah, which is, <laughs> I just said, it's, un it's unfortunate that whoever was putting this on did, did didn't offer something like that. that yeah, way. I mean, that sounds like a perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are so many different species and so many cultivars mm -hmm. and uh, so many different requirements. Right, right. no, I agree, but it, it, like in our case, I think we can, we can do this because we have already s established a set number of trees that we'll accept in the city, right? In our, in our tree guide. Yeah, the lot and all the cultivars. Yeah, but each one we've identified as to if it's salt tolerant or, you know, mm -hmm. we've established, we have the, the foundational basics for what site conditions, you know, this tree would meet. And I, I think some, even some more macro goals of, you know, is it an edible species? Is it a habitat supportive species, et cetera? So I think we have the basic foundational data to begin to, to make it a decision-making tool that we could conceivably use and pass on to like future generations. Must have invented that, like that, you would think, because trees well, are I think, well, no, I think I think I tree, so I, one of the iTree suites probably does that, but it basically is you plug in your sort of um, your site conditions, your hardscape value, and then it tells you, you know, what what is, I think, what is available, but I, it's not based upon what Todd is saying, like, you know, these 10 trees will work in this, that are salt talk, these 10 trees will work in this, uh, you know, soil volume area, these 10 trees will work in this, and then, you know, we don't have it sorted that way in, in our tree bag. I mean, in a more ah, primitive but, way, the, in the back of the um, Cornell, uh, you know, the, the, the tree guide off of the uh, Urban Horticulture Institute website. They have individual pages that say kind of what we have in a more elaborate manner. And then the back of that document, there's lists. So salt the tolerant, tall, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So you can like cross reference. I mean, it's a more primitive than what you're talking about, but you can cross reference. You could say, here's my salt tolerant. I also have a light soil. Go to that yeah. column, and you can yeah. see if any of those are over in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a little more. It's not what you're really looking for, but yeah, I think there's a reason why the program doesn't exist. <laughs> it's a good reason for someone to invent it. I, yeah. I yeah. think it's sure will be a fabulous tool. Um, all right, to so. Do list. To do list. <laughs> that's yeah. That's yeah, it does like a PhD project. Yeah, you know, I did. Yeah. I said mine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. I am I'm also gonna like going. To, I'm going to contact Jen to get the name of the adult who um, coordinates the YMCA youth leaders. Talk to Alicia about Arbor Day, and then get an Arbor Day email out to um, anybody who's ever shared their contact information. And Brock wanted the carbon neutral article that I had. Well, yeah, to the extent that we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. this, I'd like us all to be better informed. I mean, I know, I know it's generally a bad idea to cut down trees, but I'd like to actually sure. have, some, have some data that we all agree on. Yeah. Agree yeah. On. yeah. Obviously, people may be interested in this. It's showing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Yes, there is a subcommittee in the Climate Action Now group that's mm -hmm. called Food Force. And, wait, Farm, farm forests and food systems. Right, so something like that, yeah. And they're deeply considered. I mean, basically, everyone who's involved in climate action in, in Western Mass is freaking out huh. over oh, the yes. conversion of forests to biomass primarily, and very far below that, solar conversion. Mm -hmm. But biomass, they're freaking out. Mm -hmm. Well, Okay. So the, uh, I think the only thing I have is to, I was going to send Sue to Y Leaders 
Yeah. And I'll send the Excel sheet. Uh, thank you ahead of time. I, I hope it's not too many zillions of hours. Well, I'm not going to do it all this month. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> I'll start on it. Yeah. I'll so start. Long term project. Yeah. This is not yeah. something we have it's to. It's going to take a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just chip away. And Marilyn might want to be involved. Who knows? I, I think if both of you as conservation biologists is kind of fascinating. Um, I'm still working on our tree orders for uh, we're waiting for information from tree orders. Uh, got to uh, contact the YMCA once we have more information about what we're going to have available. But I think I'll probably contact them anyways just to let them know that I'm out there and just yeah, waiting. I probably would because it's been a, right. I would appreciate that. Yep. Maybe. No, I think that would be good. I'll make because a, I think uh, 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 meeting with the housing authority tomorrow to follow up on our potential site to plan for Gale Apartments. Um, I did not reach out to Marie Westerberg yet um, because I just, I, I just get a little hesitant only because I don't want to overextend ourselves for those two days. So I feel like the, the senior center project or the senior center plantings can be folded in somehow mm -hmm. in some way, so. Or they can wait for the next year or, you know, for that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they can because I'm feeling, I don't know, I, for some reason I'm just feeling kind of edgy that I don't know what we have for, for tree stock available sure. for the spring, so, yeah. and uh, I, I don't know, I, I guess i got to type the minutes too, or something, no, I, I don't oh, know. No, 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 no way, I could. Uh, uh, ghastly. Yeah, uh, ghastly. Ghastly, thank you. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Oh, a gas meter. I'm going to talk to Don about ordering that gas meter. Right. That's the other thing. Oh, so oh, gas you, you can find the link yourself. Yeah, well, we can actually just test, we can actually test the soil, test the oh, soil yeah. before oh, really? we go to plant. Yeah, yeah it's, a lot, it's a lot like the, the oh. tool you saw in that video. Okay. Oh, do we need to be whoever be trained to use it? That's a good question. I'll stuff I have to find out. I don't know. The manufacturer may yeah. provide instructions. Does that would look like rocket science? Okay. I would love to do that. That's the beginning of a whole new project. Well, I also think that when, well, I can you, operate first, this. when you first use it, I would very much like to do a, uh, a press release sure. and, and generate some interest about it. I'd love to learn how to use it. Yeah, me too. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's here, it's here. I'll make a little cake. Go around the city. Exactly. <laughs> yep. And your last item is going to work with me on the uh, trench permit modification so we can sit down with the attorney and have a party. Oh, yeah. Good. All right. I'm going to invite two degrees to a future meeting. I'm going to remind me fully on. Uh, Please visit with us next meeting. Which for okay, uh, I am going to work on the press release at some point. I'm going to help my daughter Madeline get over the hump with this brochure. And I think that that is it on my plate. We need a motion to adjourn the meeting. A motion to adjourn. Sue motions to adjourn. Second. Molly seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.